On the 28th of March, 1726, a coffin was carried into Westminster Abbey. In it was the body of a man who had held high office, although he wasn't a politician. He had had men hanged, although he wasn't a member of the judiciary. And he'd written extensively on the scriptures, although he was no cleric or priest. His coffin was carried by the Lord Chancellor, two dukes and three earls. That man was Isaac Newton. To be buried in Westminster Abbey was an honour usually reserved for kings and nobles, not commoners like Newton. But Newton was no ordinary man. Even here, it's written, mortals rejoice that there existed such an ornament of the human race. Now, Newton was the first natural philosopher or scientist, as we now call him, to be honoured in this way. But he certainly wasn't the last. In here is James Clark Maxwell. Here, Michael Faraday. And here, Paul Dirac with his equation describing the behaviour of the electron inscribed into the stone on the floor of Westminster Abbey. It's perhaps no coincidence that a country that honours its leading scientists in this way has produced far more than its fair share of trailblazers and innovators. Men and women who explained heredity by decoding DNA. Who provided the physics for every space program ever conceived and transformed communication forever with the World Wide Web. In this series, I want to explore Britain's pivotal role in creating modern science. Reveal the characters who have made science what it is today. Show how Britain has used its scientific strength for over 300 years. And explore what the future holds for British science.